everybody, this is Eric Jackson coming to you from Costa Rica. Here in Costa Rica, we're going to show you the Strokes and Concepts program. Our objective here is to make sure that you've got the fundamental skills to maneuver your boat and to have the basics to take you through a long, safe, happy, and fun paddling career. Hopefully span you for decades. So let's get started. While the Strokes and Concepts program is very intensive in terms of, of learning and listening, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to try to absorb, you should be super excited about what it's going to do for your paddling. Let me explain real quick about what you're going to get out of Strokes and Concepts as you start applying it. Number one, this, is, this program is what allows you to put your boat exactly where you want to put it. Whether you're doing play boating, creaking, river running, slalom, any kind of kayaking, it's critical that you've got the fundamentals that you can use as your foundation that allow you to learn the specific skills for those endeavors. Give you some specifics here. Number one, you've got four different parts of your body and your kayak that need to operate at the same time, but independently. Now, unfortunately, you don't have enough random access memory to do that. What do I mean? You can't actually focus on your head, paddle, your boat, and your body at the same time and be very effective in putting each of them in the positions they need to be in. Therefore, you need to develop the habits that allow you to automatically put your head, paddle, boat, and body in the right positions. And then that's right, those are the four things that you're going to want to learn to control. Head, paddle, boat, and body. So that's our primary focus and that's the thing that you're going to be able to get out of each drill that we do from here on out. They're going to have those four components. Now the cool thing about it is we're going to give you specific drills that you can use. Each one of those drills will allow you to develop as a habit what to do with your head, what to do with your paddle, what to do with your boat, and then ultimately what to do with your body. Before you know it, you'll automatically be applying these concepts and you'll start finding that without even thinking about it, your head will do the right thing, your paddle will take the right strokes, you'll use the right amount of edge, and you'll do the right thing with your torso. That is when strokes and concepts starts getting exciting and makes the, all the new and more advanced skills attainable and easier and your paddling will progress. So remember, we've got a lot to talk about, but we're going to break it down and you're going to see, see and hear a lot of repetition. Head, paddle, boat, and body. It's going to be awesome. Let's start. So you know the whole secret already. You've got to have your head, paddle, boat, and body doing the right thing, right? Cool. Well, let me go ahead and give you the rules, and if you can figure out how to apply these rules, you can skip the rest of the program. All right, step one, the head. Head always points at your target. That's rule number one. It's very easy. It's very simple to remember. 
However, most people, including myself, your default head position, that is when you're not really sure what your target is or your things are moving too fast and you forget to look at your target, where does your head go? It goes straight over the bow. And believe it or not, you spend way more time than you think with your head pointed over the bow, even though your target or where you want to go might be over there. So while you're sitting there watching me, do this. Turn to the left, turn to the right. Just double check and make sure that you can, in fact, uh, maneuver your head separate from your torso. You can do that? Cool. We'll give you plenty of examples as we go of, of where your target actually is and how to make sure that you're always looking at it. Your next thing is your paddle. Your paddle has some simple rules too. The primary rule for your paddle is that every paddle stroke should push you in the direction you want to go. Sounds easy enough. You want to take a forward stroke, you go forward. Well, there's a few little intricacies here to make sure that you take it to the next level and you truly understand what it means for every paddle stroke to push you in the direction you want to go. For example, if you want to take a forward stroke, if I were to put my paddle in like this and pull forward, that'd push me in the direction I want to go, right? No, not right. Look at my paddle blade. It's at a 45 degree angle to the water. If I take a stroke right now, half of the force is pushing me straight upwards and only half of the force is pushing me in the direction I want to go, which is forwards. Watch what happens when I extend my top hand. Ooh, look at that. Now I got a vertical paddle. Now 100% of my force is pulling me forward. A 40 pound catch on your forward stroke here is no more effective than a 20 pound catch here. Now you start to get it? Cool. We'll get through more of that stuff here pretty, pretty quick. Now our boat. Our objective with our boat is very simple. We want to always put the right amount of edge and the correct edge in the water. Most of the time, believe it or not, the right edge is no edge at all to keep your boat dead flat. For example, when you're doing forward strokes. Is there any benefit to rocking the boat when you're doing forward strokes? Not at all. Now what is the problem with not being able to keep the boat flat during forward strokes, for example? Well, while you're paddling, you're just going to be randomly dropping your edges in the water. Well, this, of course, isn't a good thing if you just happen to randomly hit the wrong eddy line at the wrong time. So our objective is to, to develop edge control. And part of developing edge control is to knowing what edge to drop. We'll get into that, but it's pretty simple. And less told otherwise, your objective is to keep the boat flat. That'll be easy enough, right? Cool. All right, what do we got left? We have our torso, our body. Well, the rule number one for our body is we try to keep our body weight over the boat. When our body weight's over the boat, we're stable. And we can use our paddle for maneuvering, whether it's play boating and doing tricks, creaking, being able to make your maneuvers, slalom, being able to go fast, or just general river running, staying right side up. Keeping the weight over the boat is a key, is a key skill. It's very tempting, once we learn how to do a brace, for example, to be doing a lot of throwing our weight over the boat, or throwing our weight away from the boat. When you get your weight off to the side, all of a sudden now you're using your paddle as a brace, which means you can no longer maneuver and do tricks, no longer can maneuver and river run. So let's keep our weight over the boat. That's rule number one. The next rule is that your body should lead every turn. Now this one, we'll spend plenty of time going through why, and I'll give you plenty of examples. But for right now, let's just make sure that you understand the rule. If you're turning to the left, your body should face over the left side of the boat. If you're turning to the right, your body should face over the right side of the boat. Very simple. Now, are you doing that right now? Hmm. Unless you've spent a lot of time developing the habit to do that, I'm afraid to say that there's a 99% chance that when you're turning, you're getting the body behind the turn, which is going to hurt your, ki your kayaking career. All righty. What do you say we uh, get moving? So strokes and concepts, so what about the concepts part? Well, the concepts, there's four main concepts that we're going to introduce you to, and they're going to become your new best friends when it comes to running whitewater. They are speed, angle, arc, and spin momentum. Now speed is simply the, whether the forward or backwards uh, momentum of your kayak relative to an eddy line, for example. Angle is simply the angle relative to the eddy line or any current, and uh, arc. Arc would be the bird's eye view of your kayak and how that, um, and how that kayak is turning 
um, relative to the current. And last but not least is spin momentum. Spin momentum is that force that you always have when you're paddling and it's always either to the left or to the right. Now when do you have spin momentum? If you're moving forwards or backwards, you've got spin momentum. Now, where does spin momentum come from? When you paddle a, a whitewater kayak, you're creating a bow wake and the boat is essentially trying to climb that bow wake. If your boat is slightly angled one way or another, which it always is, whatever way it's angled relative to that bow wake, it's going to fall off that bow wake and spin around backwards. Meaning that your whole kayaking career, you're going to have to deal with the fact that your boat doesn't go straight. Now, if you remember when you were a beginner, how hard it was to keep a boat straight in the beginning, that's spin momentum. Your first day in a kayak, it's not really your friend, but the rest of your kayaking career, with just a little bit of practice, spin momentum is one of your best friends. It makes paddling a lot more fun and a lot easier. So, speed, angle, arc, and spin momentum. Four concepts. Uh, spin momentum we'll do here in the flat water. The rest, when we get to the white water, you'll learn all about them. In this program, you're going to have a lot of great kayakers that use these examples that you can learn from. Look for Canadians, Nick Troutman, Joel Kowalski, and Ruth Gordon. Look for U.S. paddlers, EJ, Emily, and Dane Jackson, as well as Judd Kaiser. And don't forget our local guide and Costa Rica especial, Mario Vargas, otherwise known as Mario Huevo. Awesome.